So, hi everybody. So, my name is Dawn. I am the Children's Minister at St. Luke's. I also work as a pastoral counselor in the Diocese of San Diego as well as a nonprofit. And I'm here with my colleague and friend Ruth. And we wanted to talk a little bit about the times that we're living in, both regarding COVID-19 as well as the protests that are going on this week in terms of uh, supporting Black Li the Black Lives Matter movement. I apologize, that jumbled in my mouth. The Black Lives Matter movement and all that is happening and all that kind of comes up because it's normal that all sorts of emotions would be coming up for people. And we were wanting to look specifically about anxiety today, but anxiety, like, again, as like this normal emotion that it would be normal that it's maybe feeling a little higher for all of us, even if it's not something we deal with like on a regular basis. So trying to take that from the point of view as people of faith and how do we find comfort and care and grounding in our belief as women who are Christians. This obviously applies for anybody, any people of faith, but we are particularly coming from this point of view as women who are Christians. So that's my introduction. And then Ruth, I'll let you take a little time and then you can lead into what you do as a person okay. of faith. All right, thank you, Dawn. And um, thank you for this invitation. I mean, came up kind of impromptu and I'm glad we, we, because we've been talking about the times, obviously, like anybody is and should be. And um, so my name is Ruth. I am with St. Luke's. I'm so blessed with St. Luke's Episcopal Church here in San Diego, North Park. And I'm presently um, also in the position of administrator and business developer. And I'm so blessed to be with um, so many, such a wonderful community of people all around in North Park. And yeah, so happy to be here. In, even in these difficult times, um, serious difficult times it's been for sure. Um, starting in March with COVID and then leading up to, to just a nationally or yeah nationally hard difficult time but again like Don said as a Christian and I've been a Christian way since I was um, I grew up in a Christian family and so I've been a Christian for many many years and um, my faith and my beliefs um, definitely Definitely model how, not necessarily model, lead me um, in how I respond to even times like this. I'm obviously first a human being with emotions and different emotions. And then um, I'm blessed to be a Christian because I think personally, if I wasn't a Christian or if I didn't have a strong belief in my God and my Lord, who is my savior, what? what would I do? What would I do? And I'm sure people find other belief systems or things that keep them grounded. But as a Christian, a spiritual person, um, we will talk about what we do. That was a long introduction, Don. I what? kind of almost went into it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for it. Well, we said that we wanted to share a little bit about like the practices we use, right? Like um, specifically scripture passages that really have spoken to us over the years that have provided comfort. So you, you knew immediately, right? Like when we were on the phone with each other talking about this, you knew immediately what, what was the one. So I'm going to leave, like hand it back over to you to talk about that and then yeah yeah okay well, yeah so i mean i will say first before i even say what that first spiritual um by biblical verses that came to mind i'll say of course a lot of us are shaped even in our christianity by our background so as somebody who um came from a place where 
for a period of time I lived also in a place which was which had chaos and and war mm -hmm. then I kind of go back to those times as well when new distress comes up of course I kind of remember how I dealt with it then and so I actually don't even it's very it's from within it's very intuitive I don't think about it I don't go like oh what do I do now in terms of stress so I mean what do I do now that this that these riots what do I do now that mm -hmm. someone has been you know brutally murdered what do I do it's just natural emotions come up and for me I'll start off with saying I, I am very empathetic I'm very empathetic to people's feelings and emotions and situations. So one of the emotions that I know that comes out of me is cry. <laughs> I mm -hmm. cry with sadness. And before I even I think I'm angry, I kind of said an emotion that can, can come up. Now I don't cry all the time, I must say. So some people have seen their share of me crying and there's, mm -hmm. I'm actually glad that I probably, it gives me the few minutes or the few times that I have cried. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a relief mm -hmm. and a release. I don't, put tensions in and let it build in there and build up anger and resentment much yeah. so so i've come to actually not mind the few times I, and martin can attest to that i don't cry all the time i mean i think mm -hmm. <laughs> i really don't i mean the people say oh, when was the last time i even saw you cry but yeah so but crying is a release i think you're right it is it is mm -hmm. and and once it's out there i really literally can say that next moments or next few minutes thereafter after processing everything for that moment of just kind of getting that release that that i feel relieved and then i can move on to the next thing so it's kind of like maybe those long processes of breathing which then bring up all these different phases and stages but at this point i must say yeah i was saddened um mostly sudden because for just seeing what happened so in times of troubles and this might just have been also cultural or just upbringing i i run to god i run to god as my foundation my mm -hmm. strength my shield my protection my protector my my everything so i do dig into my inner self and ask and pray, ask for protection and mm -hmm. seek his calm, God's calmness, my, his calming power. And I literally do that. So um, I'm not saying that only seek God in terms of in, in difficult times, but especially in difficult times, mm -hmm. I find myself really going yearning and, and and praying and praying for whatever needs to be done in this case calm peace comfort for mm -hmm. everybody involved for the families who are especially touched and moved and changed by this and then all the outer circles the larger community and then in this case all the different states and then the nation and mm -hmm wherever else then these emotions have moved to. And so I seek, and again, not intuitive, I don't kind of necessarily go like, okay, which verses will give me strength necessarily? Over the years, I've, these verses that I've always either recited or we even used to recite as a family maybe in times of troubles. And Psalm 23 is one of those. Psalm mm -hmm. 23 um, has been, a lot of comfort brought a lot of comfort over the years in terms of distress because it just literally says the lord is my shepherd i shall mm -hmm. not want he makes me lie down in green pastures so i start imagining those green pastures what they would be that's when all the calm has come and all the quiet yeah. um he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So um, I used to say that in my native Luganda language as well. And Mkama msumba wange seta genga anga mza kumabari agamu domto akumia we meme yange. So I would want to recite the whole thing. It's actually just six verses. It's a lovely um, psalm. I'm glad that's one of the ones that I first learned because um, yeah. it's shorter. I'm not so good at memorizing verses. So what I have found so helpful <laughs> is actually songs. There's mm. so many songs over the years that I have learned that I actually pull out in those moments when I need oh. those verses. And most okay. times it really is so helpful. Um, the Lord's my shepherd again, but back to Psalm 20, 23 right. or, sorry, what was that? No, I and said then, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll have, I'll go, there is power, power, wonder, working power, peace be with you. Or when troubles along the way, mm -hmm. um, some of them are just contemporary ones. Some of them are songs that we sang just growing up, but yeah. all God is good, which is a song we sing all the time. I mean, at times we think, in terms of troubles, we won't even be singing all oh, God is good. But yes, actually singing all oh, God is good and affirming mm -hmm. his goodness and power and greatness mm -hmm. also brings those, that praise and worship for me also brings in those better positive emotions. It kind of brings the calm and takes away the fear and anxiety because then mm -hmm. I'm worshiping. And then, because, yeah, those praise songs and worship, I mean, basically, literally inviting in mm -hmm. God and the Spirit, who is the God of calm, who is yeah. the most powerful, almighty. So, yeah, songs help me a lot. Um, I hum them, I sing them, I, I think about them, or I play. Music. Well, right, I was going to say, you even helped us a couple of times in children's ministry. Oh, um with the with the song we were gonna sing for the bishop, but then all of this happened, so we couldn't. And then I know there was at least one more. Oh no, you came down a few times and taught, taught the kids. Um, I, and I and we, I mean, I should, we sing a lot, right? The kids sing a lot, and I we're teaching them songs a lot, and I see really how they respond. Like it just brings some some like to sing louder, and some of them like to dance, and some are quieter oh, yeah. in the back. But like they all have a willingness to sing and there is just something really I can speak to my experience of how song has really been a powerful connector for me in my own faith, like making me feel connected um, to God or like helping me realize that connection, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. Could see how, how meaningful that is in your own life too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how about you, John? That's mostly how it is really. Um, going back to the scriptures and you know i must say uh whoever it is in our lives that has that gives us that calm mm -hmm. those are the people we usually go to either family but i must say as a spiritual as a person as a christian our pastors our spiritual leaders you know they those sermons over the years and those teachings over the years, they, those things, those come back at those times and you remember those things. And, and it does, you don't have to go back to like, okay, what happened on Sunday, May, March 25th? What was the sermon? Because we probably won't know the dates. But the seeds are sown in our hearts and souls during the years that we are receiving the word. And then that's why it's so powerful because then it starts coming back and comforting us. I mean, reading the Bible and praying, I mean, pleading with, with our Lord in terms of, in times of troubles is one thing. And then to that point, I must say Bible study is great. And um, I know so many people don't maybe get the time for Bible study, but mm -hmm. We do have a Bible study that I usually attend and our pastor, Mother Laurel, leads it and is because you dive deeper into the yeah. word mm -hmm. in ways that sometimes you don't get the chance. So yeah. and then Pastor Colin too has had all these sermons and words of encouragement and and so 
those are things that really, as a Christian, I think, um, help us through these times, these hard times. Mm -hmm. And then during the good times or calm times, and the calm times are coming, Mm -hmm. they are going to come. So when the good times come, yeah, we can rejoice and sing and still, again, go back to, to, to rejoicing and praising God. And this is our mm-hmm. moment of asking for strength and comfort and calm and peace. So, yeah, yeah. So, many, well, the Bible, well, a few things came to mind when you were talking about, yeah, the Bible study, I haven't been able to attend recently, but I remember before when I would attend with you and other women from St. Luke's and I really just love hearing different perspectives on the same scripture because often what we would usually I think if I'm remembering correctly we would reflect on the gospel of the week coming um and that sometimes just it can be just like one sentence that really Mm -hmm. like strikes me um, and I could, I could dig into that for a while. And, but I also found it really helpful to hear the voices and the input of other women and like mm-hmm. bringing their own experience of God and God in their lives into, right. into those times together. Cause I think it provided me clarity and it also provided me a different view, a different perspective that I didn't, exactly. I didn't have. Right. Um, yes. And so I found that really valuable too. Um, yeah, and I think I was talking on the children's ministry on Wednesday, yesterday, I guess, about Saul's conversion, about Paul's conversion from Saul to Paul. Mm. And we were talking about, Declan and I were talking about like how throughout history there really are times of turmoil Mm. because for Christians in the new church after the resurrection was really a time of serious persecution right and Saul had been a part of that and then as we all know right converted to Paul and really I mean it's just um, a true I was telling Declan how much I love Paul and his stories and his letters and so really a true like beacon of hope and a true Mm -hmm. beacon of the word um so so throughout history and throughout difficult times going back to the hope and the love and the message of of the gospels and then of the acts of the apostles and the epistles um that there is and the Psalms too, I have to recommend it to people when they're like feeling particularly stressed and difficult mm. time. And especially I've had, I had this one person in particular who I was talking with and she was feeling some doubt in her face mm. because she was going through such a hard time. And I said, read the Psalms, honestly, because the psalmist, like David and the other psalmists, like all the time are talking about like, where are you? Yes. Are you with me? Right. Um, and so, and then like watching their own experience, the author of the psalm, like their own experience of like then kind of coming back around to God, but like really genuinely, honestly saying like, Like, are you even here with me? That's great. So that experience of feeling like God is not present because the world, our own personal experiences and the world around us can feel so desolate is is one that is a part of the history of the human story, I think. Um, And so, but, but also the part of that story is that God is with us and that there is comfort in that there can be there has been for me too comfort in that and really um in very difficult dark times in my own life i have really leaned on my faith and it sometimes has been the thing that's like pulled me through so i the 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 thing that came to me immediately when i was thinking about this is psalm 46 verse 10 be still and know that i am god i like that I like the song that goes with that. Be still and know that I am Lord. Go ahead. I like oh, I that. Love that. Oh, I love that. It brings oh. a lot of calm to me as well. Yes. I have the kids sing that. 
Ooh, yes. maybe you could join us. Absolutely, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes. Um, and it really is just like, it, and I think I, I do have not like I do have moments of anxiety for sure, mm -hmm. and everybody does everybody um, does? Yeah, and I'll, and often it will be not surprisingly in times that are quiet when I'm alone and my mind can just kind of go, and I have found. I have found such comfort in the in the Psalm forty six ten of be still and know that I am God. Like, like calm yourself, child. In a in the most like loving, endearing way. Like calm yes. yourself, and I am with you. You're not alone. I'm holding you. Um. So, yeah, that's the one that I go back to, over and over for my own, like in terms of comfort. I mean, there are many, many scripture passages that I refer to and lean on in terms of like inspiration and hope. Um, and to really understand too, like where God is calling me as a person of faith, because it's there, like those, those messages are there in the scripture. But in terms of finding comfort and calm, 4610 is for, is, is that, is my scripture passage. Fantastic. And I'm you know, trusting. Yes. Finish, finish. No, go ahead. I, was gonna, gonna, I agreed with no, you. I was going to say, right. And I was going to say, because um, what I don't, the impression, I, would, I don't, I never want to give the impression that, well, you have to be a Christian for many, many, many years to then be able to come up with all these verses that can calm you in times of trouble. Because we have the Bible. I mean, and it's hard to just go like, let me open up the Bible and do this. So at times what I've done when I needed to, at the back of our Bibles, we have a concordance. And sometimes mm. you can just say, okay, anxiety or anger. I and mean, then some verses, it's not the best way. Like I said, mm. I mean, uh, pastors and spiritual leaders tell us better ways. And there's always other tools mm -hmm. that uh, pastors and spiritual leaders can give us regarding the specific verses that can help. But all I'm saying is, if somebody out there listening just goes like, okay, you know what though, but I don't have maybe a Bible, but if you have an app, like Bible, you know, there's so many online Bibles as well that even have yeah. pretty good, um, one can actually almost, I mean, search and find verses that relate to mm -hmm. something specific. And mm -hmm. so, so, one maybe one can even use that time to research and find out for that specific time if someone's going through a hard time but mm -hmm. i think even more important importantly instead of searching on one's own sharing and talking and when you were saying Dion, mm -hmm. about bible studies um well during covid we we're not able to really meet in bible study but we had an online bible study but sharing with people and talking to people talking to other Christians and seeing how they too are dealing with it and how mm -hmm. that also is very comforting. That kind of the fellowship of our fellow Christians mm -hmm. and realizing, oh, this emotion that I'm having right now is not just me. Others are experiencing it because we're all God's children and yeah. all of us at different times in our lives, at different times in our Christian lives, are going to need maybe different tools to deal with um with the feelings that we're feeling but definitely mm -hmm. everybody at any one given time actually at times i don't even have to kneel down to pray like when i'm driving maybe to work yeah. or you know just saying a prayer and mm -hmm. singing and thinking about mm -hmm. better times hope is a great 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 thing to always think about in terms of trouble hope and yeah. knowing you will go through them I in the desert. I mean, like you were saying in the Old Testament, or the times that were hard for mm -hmm. other Christians. Well, mm -hmm. Moses through the desert. I mean, basically just knowing, okay, there is the crossing of the desert. There is going to be greener pastures. There is going to be peace again. So holding on to the hope mm -hmm. and knowing our Lord is faithful and we will go through this um, and waiting and also learning and being being open to what I might learn during this time and what the Lord might actually be 
telling me about myself, about mm-hmm. my neighbor, my fellow Christians, my mm-hmm. the world around me. But generally just taking the opportunity to get something out mm-hmm. of the hard time and be, be ready or prepare yourself for the mm-hmm. next hard time. And if no other hard time ever comes, even right. better. But yeah, just being equipped. Well, as you were saying that, I was like, right before you said that, I was having like that exact same thought. That's why I got so like excited (laughs) because I was thinking like with COVID-19 and with the marches um, and the protests that are going on, I think first like things, it's as if like veils are being pulled back and maybe Mm -hmm. it's things we knew, but like things are being revealed about like injustice in society and the treatment of you know, our sisters of color, sisters and brothers of color, right? Like, and that the whole, like, growth does come with, like, agitation and, and difficulty, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, that's when we, like, kind of look at, like, oh, wait, like, when we're kind of going smoothly along, like, I'll speak for myself, when I'm kind of going smoothly along, like, oh, all right, things are working okay. But, like, if I hit a bump in the road, then it's like, wait, what is going on here? Like I can kind of go on autopilot. Um, And right now I feel like with both the pandemic and um, with the demonstrations, you know, there's sadness and there's grief and there's trauma and there's difficulty, but I feel truly, and maybe this is with a piece about hope that like seeds are being sown and, and, injustices are being revealed and people are saying no more and that i i really hope that this does change our hearts and minds in a way that like creates a better world creates a you know a more just world um a lot of time coming yeah and And that's something that, sorry, go ahead, finish No, up. you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, no, because as you say it, um, I'm thinking and knowing that many people have been, brothers and sisters, have actually hoped that all of us are seeing this on a daily basis. But like you said, sometimes it requires a bump on the road for some to remember, but some people have and are living this on a daily basis and kind of just that awareness that, um, and, and, and it is, it is, it should bring out for any Christian, I hope empathy and, and a real desire to, to, to do better as Christians Mm -hmm. at feeling empathetic about, other people's situations and Mm -hmm. really trying to understand the situation deeper and not and not avoid it because um i think avoiding talking about these things is really just kind of sweeping things under the carpet as Mm -hmm. we started off talking about anger building up sadness building up um which is as we know not good for mental health right um, whereas spiritual we, health there's, yes spiritual health whereas if we talk and have conversations and get to that point where we're comfortable talking and bringing up race and mm-hmm. and in terms of covid injustices of um health yeah. availability disparities mm-hmm. and without feeling like anyone is attacking anyone but like we're talking about an mm-hmm. issue i mean i'm thinking I'm praying for that day when we'll talk about race and all of us are comfortable. Whether one, um, I had actually today, just today, somebody who will, I don't remember exactly who she is, but she's a professor at Yale. I don't, I didn't get the name because I was in the car and finishing quickly, kind of coming out. But how she said introducing a topic of um, whiteness, but more like a conversation, so that when race is mentioned, it's not like we're just talking about people of color but that mm-hmm. when race is mentioned both people mm-hmm. who are not of color and people of color mm-hmm. have that discussion and dialogue and and so when we get to that point when we can bring up race and 
nobody feels like oh let me leave the room now <laughs> you know oh oh no the party should is mm. is being stopped by this topic so we sh- should aim to get to that point i mean just like spiritually there's topics that mm-hmm. are hard mm-hmm. but when we approach them with with love and spirituality mm-hmm. and the, and the knowledge that we will not be judged yeah. then we can talk about harder things i mean we as Christians, it's so easily talk about, say, mm-hmm. sadness, you know, and we can mm-hmm. talk about sadness for a long time or if someone, you know, we, we do have, most times we're able to be empathetic. That's the truth as Christians. So I think um, a time should come as well where, and we can start with ourselves. We shouldn't wait for the whole world or for the whole, you know, for other people right. too. As Christians, right. we have a starting point or we can have a starting point where we can say, you know what? let's be able to talk about race without someone feeling like oh no you're gonna really really start well making me feel uncomfortable (laughs) but well okay a couple things because i want to go back to my own privilege about like being able to go through life on autopilot which i'm really glad that you mentioned um because even and i was talking to a colleague of mine through the other work i do is with um refugees and asylum seekers as a pastoral Mm -hmm. counselor and I think especially because I'm doing that work I need to check in with myself because it could be very easy to be like well look I'm like doing this work with people Mm -hmm. right like um I really need to be sure to check in with myself and like what is my privilege and like being empathetic and understanding to the experience of others and not again not needing to be like, well, Ruth, tell me about it. Like, I need to do the work. Like, I need to do research. I need to, like, understand. But, and I need to be empathetic and sympathetic and open-minded. But I would say that piece about discomfort. Hmm. We, if it's uncomfortable, we still need to have the conversation and probably need to have it even more so, right? Like, because... I don't know that we'll ever get to a point where like everyone in the room is going to feel comfortable about it. But my, I, I just hope that they can kind of check in with, and you know what, this isn't even our responsibility, right? Like we'll check in, I'll check in with myself. And if I'm feeling uncomfortable to, and this is what I guess I would tell the other people, if one is feeling uncomfortable about a conversation about race, like check in and look and be like, what, like what? Okay. Why am I avoiding this? why am I getting defensive? Why am I so scared? You know? Um, and even if it's cause I've had conversations with my son multiple times around race. And I'll tell you, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> like, and like, but I'm like, I need to have this conversation and he and I need to talk about it. Um, and we do, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the tools I've been given from resources and from conversations especially from conversations um with others and just sort of opening my own eyes but i understand where you're coming from where like it would get i think i do at least what i'm the sense of like getting to a place where we can have that conversation without people turning around and walking out but i i i i'm gonna challenge people to still have it even if it's uncomfortable uh, it reminds me, thank you. <laughs> reminds me um, of actually there was a time when um, we were chatting I think it was tea time and we were chatting and and one of our sisters actually said oh she maybe puts out a book about race and and when she's on a plane and at the time I remember I did say that I actually don't because I don't want someone to feel uncomfortable so even so 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 it's not just so the, who actually feels uncomfortable in this conversation is not just the person who's, you know, we all, for different reasons, can feel uncomfortable. So it's not like right. you don't, as a non, a person who's not, of, of not, who's not black, that you feel more uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Even um, myself as a black person can feel uncomfortable about race because at Great. times it's, 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 one just, it's because we've been conditioned that way mm-hmm. somehow that um, most people don't feel comfortable. And then if I want to be 
Christian-like and gentle and kind, mm. then I don't want to make my sisters and brothers feel mm. uncomfortable. So then I don't want to talk about it. So I kind of try to to avoid it. But so it's it's on all of us. To, it's an awesome to point. That's such a good point. Bring it up and be and know that it's, we're not bringing it up to be aggressive. Mm-hmm. We're not bringing it up to be to 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 be defensive. We're not bringing up race to 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 cause us to then talk about the bigger problem. But it, as we see, there's so many problems just by even mentioning the word race. Um, all sorts of things come up: economical yeah. economic power and fear and so on and so and so it's it's for all of us and whether someone has experienced racism because they've grown up in this country or whether someone has never really experienced racism because someone came from another part of the world where Mm -hmm. they were the majority and so but eventually when we live in a community where um you are still being seen as a black person and not necessarily a person who has a different history. So the responsibility mm-hmm. um, lies on in all of our um, lives, you know, mm-hmm. we, we cannot avoid it. And, and yes, mm-hmm. it's, it's so, so yeah, that my prayer is that we can get to that point where we can talk about race without feeling like we're f- offending people or that we're bringing yeah. it up to, to make people uncomfortable that, that we, that we feel comfortable. Um, very encouraged by all the brothers and sisters in the world who are not necessarily black and have not necessarily experienced race who are now out there talking about it. So thank you, Don. Thank you to our church and our pastors and our leaders in the Episcopal Church and our yeah. bishop all the way up to the archbishop. Mm-hmm. Um, helpful, helpful conversations that I'm praying will go on. Yes, I um, agree with you. I agree with you. And we had said we wanted to be about 20-ish minutes. I think we're there. I think we did okay. it. Do you want, would you feel comfortable saying a little prayer to kind of? Sure. And I'll start off by maybe the final verse that I would like to say is First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And I know most verses should be in context, but the quick one that says, cast all your anxieties on him, on Jesus, mm-hmm. because he cares for for you because he cares for us yes thank you so much for this time and um, there's a lot more that we can discuss and we will yes. discuss and we'll continue the conversation without yeah. making anybody feel uncomfortable hopefully just out of love, <laughs> and if pure they love. Do, i pray that they can own that discomfort and look look at it and feel feel okay actually saying like i feel uncomfortable like, mm, that's but, a good one. you know, but we, you're right that we don't need to be defensive with each other. And if we do start, like we kind of the, like the whole, we order, like, it's okay to walk away and say, like, I got to walk away from this conversation right now. You know, that's, that's okay too. Well. You know, that's true as well. So thank you, Ruth, so much. I really you enjoyed this conversation. So a quick prayer or? Yeah. No, we're done. No. We're do you want to? Oh, yeah. Quick, quick one. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we've had to have a conversation about the present and to talk about how we are dealing with the unrest in the world. And the, although we didn't get a lot of chance to talk about, say, COVID, um, but race in this case and, and what is going on, the lack of quiet in our lives and communities surrounding injustice or the feeling of injustice or all the other emotions that people are feeling right now we thank you that you lord god are still the almighty god and that we can come to you anytime for comfort protection we pray father that you will send the holy spirit that you will bless us with everything that we need in this moment. We pray for wisdom, for understanding, we pray for calm, we pray for peace, and we pray for all the things that still make us great Christians in this world, for all the spirit, the fruits of the spirit. We pray for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, for everything that we want to be as Christians. Bless us, Lord. Keep us safe. In your most holy name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.